We know that the derivative tells us where a function is increasing or decreasing based on the sign of that derivative. And we can use that knowledge to help us gain an understanding of where we might have local extreme values, so where we might have a local maximum or a local minimum. And the first derivative test is the tool that we're going to use in order to determine where we have local extreme values. So let's suppose that f of x is continuous on some interval a to b. c is a critical point of your function in that interval a to b. And then we'll assume that f is differentiable, so we have a smooth curve everywhere on a to b except possibly at c. So it's, the derivative exists everywhere except possibly at this critical point c. If f prime of x changes sign from positive to negative at c, then f has a local maximum at c. So here we can kind of view this, if we look at our sign chart, I think that's very helpful. If we have our critical point c here, and our derivative changes from positive to negative, we can sort of view that change in uh, sign as here we have a local maximum. Of course, that's not the only way it could look. You could have uh, something that looks like this, in which case, at this point c, it's not differentiable. But if you look on the left-hand side, our function is increasing, which means that the derivative is positive. And if you look at the right-hand side, our function is decreasing, which means our derivative is negative. And here again, at this particular point, we have a local maximum. So if our sign chart changes from positive to negative, then we have a local maximum. If, on the other hand, f prime of x changes sign from negative to positive at c, then we have a local minimum. So if instead our derivative sign chart let's say it's negative on the left-hand side and positive on the right-hand side. If our function is kind of a nice smooth curve, if we're working with the polynomial, say, we can say here at this point we've got our local minimum. And again, that's not the only way it could look. You could have a cusp, you could have a sharp corner. Any of these if you look at, whoops, any of these if you look at the left-hand side, our function is decreasing, which means that our derivative is negative. And on the right-hand side, our function is increasing, which means we have a positive derivative. So at all of these points of change where our, where our derivative changes sign, that's where we have that local minimum. So here we have a local minimum. If f prime of x does not change sign at c, then we have no local extreme value at c. So if instead our sign chart is positive on both sides or negative on both sides, so let's take the positive case. Let's say it's positive on both sides, so it might be our function might look like this. It might be increasing, and then perhaps we have uh, a tangent line, or excuse me, uh, a derivative of zero, so a horizontal tangent line, but then after that it continues to increase. And here at this point, well that's neither a local minimum nor a local maximum. It looks like something important might be happening there, but for right now, if all we're concerned about is local extrema, there is no local maximum or minimum value there. So in this case we would have no local extrema. So we're going to use this idea of the first derivative test to help us determine where we have local extrema. So in example three, we want to find all local extrema of the function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x plus 1 here. I'm going to start off, we need to find the critical points of our function, which means we need to find the derivative, f prime of x, in this case is 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. So there is our derivative. I'm going to say I want to find the critical points, which means I want to find places where f prime of x is equal to zero in places where f prime of x uh, does not exist. 
And let's see, let's start with the left hand side. Let's start with setting our derivative equal to zero. So 6x squared plus 6x minus 12 equals zero. Here, uh, let's see, I can factor out a six. That'll leave me with x squared plus x minus two equals zero. So I have six I'm left with x plus two times x minus one equals zero. My critical points look like they will be x equals negative two and x equals positive one here. So there are two of our critical points. We also want to consider where f prime of x does not exist, but here in this case, we're started with a polynomial, which means that f prime is also a polynomial. It exists everywhere. So that means that there is no point where the derivative fails to exist. It exists at, at all x values. So that means that we're having no additional critical points. That means that negative two and positive one over here, these are the only critical numbers that we're going to be uh, worried about for this problem. So I'm gonna follow a really similar procedure that I did in the last uh, video. I'm going to construct a number line, just like we have been. So I'm gonna say here's negative two, here's one. So there are our critical points. I'm gonna say here is f prime, again, labeling my number line. And also I want to make sure that I describe the value of the derivative at each of these points. The value of the derivative at these points, we found that by setting the derivative equal to zero, which means that the derivative is zero at each of these two x values. So just like I did in the last video, I'm going to take a number in each one of these intervals. I will plug it into my derivative to determine whether our value is positive or negative. So I'm going to start with negative three, why not? F prime of negative three. And you could use this version, but I uh, don't have a graphing calculator handy, at least not right now. So I'm going to factor out that six and work with x squared plus x minus two. I think that's just gonna be easier to work with by hand. So this will be six times negative three squared plus negative three minus two. Let's see, I've got six, I've got nine minus five. This is really six times four gives me 24. And in particular, it's a positive 24. So our first derivative is positive, which means our function is increasing on that interval. Next, I need a number between negative two and positive one. Anytime I can use zero, I always think that zero is a really nice number to work with. So I'll say f prime of zero. And again, I'll just use the factored form just to be consistent here. Six times zero squared plus zero minus two. This is really six times negative two. So I have a negative 12. So my derivative is negative in that middle interval, which means that my function is decreasing on that interval. Lastly, I need to pick a number on the right-hand side of one. How about positive two? So f prime of positive two, this is six times two squared plus two minus two. So let's see, this is six times four which gives me 24 once again. So it's a positive 24, it's positive, which means that my function must be increasing. And once we have this sign chart laid out here, we just need to look at it and determine where we have local extrema. And I think that drawing in these increasing and decreasing lines can be very helpful in looking at that. Because I can actually kind of look at it and see, okay, I'm, I'm increasing, I'm decreasing and then increasing. And then you can just kind of look at these points right here and say, well, what's going on right here? Well, that looks like a local maximum. What's going on right here? That is a local minimum. So that means at negative two, I have a local max. And at one, I have a local minimum. 
The other thing these problems might ask you for is they might ask you for the actual ordered pair. So they might ask you for both the x value and the y value. Right now, all we have is the x value. But in order to find the y value, I'm going to look back at my original function. I'm going to take those two x values and plug those into that original function in order to find the y value. So we're almost done right here. Let's just keep going. Uh, let's work with f of negative 2, and I need to be able to see my function. So this is 2 times negative 2 to the third, plus 3 times negative 2 squared, minus 12 times negative 2, plus 1. So here I have 2 times minus 8, plus 3 times 4, minus 24, plus 1. So I have minus 16 plus 12 minus 24 plus 1. So let's see, this will be negative 4, negative 28, looks like negative 27 here. So if I'm labeling where I have these local extrema, I have a local max. You might see it written a few different ways. You might see it written as f of negative 2 is equal to negative 27. So we might write it like this, where here's our x value and here's our y value. Or you might see it written as just an ordered pair, negative 2 comma negative 27. Personally, I don't really have a preference how you write your answers. My math lab might have one way that it only accepts answers, um, but I don't have a strong preference on how you how you write that. If you put your answer in as an ordered pair and it's looking for this function notation, that's something that I'll go back in and, and as long as you have the coordinates correct, I'll give you the credit. I just care that you have both the x value and the y value. We need to find the y coordinate corresponding to 1 though, so let's do that. f of 1, this is 2 times 1 to the third plus 3 times 1 squared minus 12 times 1 plus 1. So let's see, this is 2 plus 3 minus 12 plus 1. 2 plus 3 gives me 5. Minus 12 would be negative 7 plus 1 here, negative 6. So I have a local minimum, right? We said a local minimum, just check. Yep, we had a local minimum at either f of 1 equals negative 6 or if you prefer to give an ordered pair, 1 comma negative 6. So really this process is going to be very very similar to the problems that we were looking at before. We're still finding our critical points, we're still making a number line, we're still making a sign chart, we're plugging numbers into our derivative. Just this new part at the end is we're just looking at that sign chart to identify where do I have a local maximum and where do I have a local minimum.